Hey, Mike from Prep Pros here. I've been a full-time SAT tutor for over seven years. I've worked with over a thousand students and there's two data points that I have tracked, which has helped me get students to scoring perfectly on the SAT math section far faster than most. And this is the types of questions that are showing up SAT to SAT in the trends year to year and the types of questions that students initially struggle with. So in this video, we're gonna cover 10 concepts that you most likely not only struggle with, but also are pretty much guaranteed to show up on your SAT. Now, the first thing we're gonna start with has been showing up on the test in 2021 and 2022 like crazy, and I anticipate we're gonna see the same for 2023. This is scale factors, and they have been giving tons of students problems, but in a quick minute, you're gonna to learn to master these. So here we see trapezoid A and B shown are similar. The length of each side of trapezoid A is eight times the length of each corresponding side of B. The area of A is how many times as large the area of B. Now, these problems feel really tricky because you look at this and you're like, I don't even know what the actual side lengths and height of this trapezoid is, but there's a really, really simple trick to solving these. If you're dealing with a two-dimensional object, you're simply gonna take your scale factor, how many times proportionally bigger a side length is of one shape than the other, and you're gonna square it. So the answer to this is as simply as eight squared is gonna give you your answer of 64. Now, if you're dealing with a three-dimensional object like spheres and rectangles, which we have seen on the SAT, you're gonna take your scale factor and you're simply going to cube it. So if we have one rectangle has side lengths that are three times greater than another one, the new area is going to be the same as three cubed, which would mean the new area would be 27 times larger. All right, now the second thing we're gonna run through is exponential growth and decay. Now this feels tricky for a lot of students just because they aren't familiar with the basics. So out of my math book, I'm gonna kind of pop on the teaching page here for the formula we can use, but all we really need to understand is the basics. We need to understand that this first portion, that P that you will see on that formula sheet, is going to give us our starting value, and then this is simply gonna be the same as one plus or minus the percent increase or decrease. So in 2005, 10 phlox plants were planted in a garden, so that's our starting value. So anything that doesn't have 10 in this spot is automatically wrong. Now, the only thing we have to look at is the one plus or minus. Now, the number of phlox plants increased by 140%. Well, 140% is the same as 1.4. So this equation is gonna be the same as 10 times one plus 1.4 to the T. And that is the exact same as 10 times 2.4 to the T. Up at number three is graphs on the no calculator section. And now this is a tip that in whether we're dealing with an exponential function or a linear one, you can use to get these right every single time. Do not try to do this question conceptually, simply pick points and check your answer choices. So here, the easiest point I could pick would be, well, it looks like 10 comma two, maybe 10 comma three, but all these answer choices are gonna be so far spread out, we don't have to be really specific. So now all we know is right, body length is L. So if I plug 10 in for L in each of these equations, the correct one is gonna give me a value close to two. And 10 squared is 100, so this would give me 123, 202, 323. This is the only one that's less than 100. That's how far out the SAT spaces these answers. But 0.02 times 100 does give us two. That's how we can confidently tell it's right. Do not try to conceptually do these. All right, up at number four is good old line questions. These have been showing up on the SAT for the past seven years. So it's something that they love to reuse over and over. Now here we're told that the line passes through these two points and we're told the line crosses the y-axis at the point with the coordinate zero comma b. How do we solve for b? This is really all about taking two points and finding the full equation of a line. There's really easy steps we can do. So first we'll do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We always need to know, know the slope. So this is gonna give us negative two over four, which is gonna give us a slope of negative one half. Now from here, the easiest way that I like to do this and sticks for almost all of my students best is I will then write y equals negative one half x plus b. And I know my b's look a little bit like sixes, so make sure you see that's a b. Now all we have to do is take either pair of these points, we're just gonna plug in the x value and the y value to solve for b. So we're gonna use two and six. So we'll do two equals negative one half times six, it's a pretty bad six, plus b, and that's gonna give us that two equals negative three plus b. That's gonna tell us that five is gonna equal b up at number five is the vertex form of a parabola. Now, this is really easy once you know the formula and you can identify the different pieces here. Well, the first thing we wanna look at is we know that a value, which comes before, is gonna to have to be negative if it's facing downwards. So that can tell me automatically that a and d 
both don't work already. Now from here, we just need to identify that, well, the vertex is gonna be at the point 30 comma 50. So we're looking for those H and K values of 30 and 50. And now our H one is a little bit easier to identify, but the SAT in classic fashion has taken the 50 that would usually be over here and just moved it over to the front of the equation. All right, next up is standard deviation. Now, although this is supposed to be one of the hardest questions on the test, it's really easy to learn. Standard deviation on the SAT, all you have to understand is it's about the spread of the values in a data set. If values are more closely clumped together towards the middle of the data set, like we see in data set A, where they're all more evenly spread out in data set B, this one is going to have a comparatively smaller standard deviation than the other one. You can just visually look at it closer together, smaller, spread further apart, larger. So this is gonna let us identify that, well, the standard deviation of A is less than B, so we know that's not right. And we know the standard deviations aren't equal, so we don't even have to calculate the mean part and we can tell that A is correct. Up next is a strategy that can really take the hardest questions on the test and make them way easier. Same way earlier when we were looking at that graphing question, we plugged in values. If you're dealing with word problems, you can often do the exact same to make them way easier. So here we're told a piece of paper is cut two times resulting in three smaller pieces of paper, the same shape and size. Then three smaller pieces are stacked and cut two times to form nine even pieces, each with the same, with the same shape and size. The process continues until the pieces are too small to cut, which the following functions give the number of pieces f of c the result after c cuts where c is an even number. Looks like a doozy, but all we wanna do is we wanna to try to pull out some points. Well, we know if we cut it twice, we should get three. If we cut it four times, we should get nine. So I would pull out the points two comma three and four comma nine. Now, sometimes you have to use multiple points. Sometimes you can just plug one in to find the right answer. But what we know is if we plug two in for C, the correct answer is gonna to have to give us an output of three. And the only one that that works for is A. And we could also check the second point well, three to the four over two is the same as three squared. And yes, three squared equals nine. None of these other answer choices work out at all. And you can plug those points in to check. Now we're gonna close out with three things that you need to know if you're really looking to score 750 plus. But if that's not you, I still recommend to watch through because these are relatively easy concepts to pick up and could make a big difference to you getting an extra question or two right on test day. Now, the first one is infinite in no solutions with systems of equations. So here we're dealing with no solutions. So one of the two equations in a linear system is 2x plus 2y equals 2. The system has no solution. Which equation could be the other equation in the system? Well, the really advanced way that I teach these, and if I lose you here, wait on, because I'll go back through the simpler version, is if we're looking for no solutions, we're thinking about two lines where the slopes are the same, but the intercepts are different. Now for the slopes to be the same, that means the ratio of our x coefficient to y coefficient in both equations must be the same. So for both b and d, we meet that first requirement because as two is to two, three is to three, and two is to two. But a and c do not meet that requirement. Now our other requirement is the intercepts must be different. Now we're gonna find the intercept by dividing this value by our y coefficient. But for d, it's not gonna still equal one, and that's how we can tell that D is the correct answer. Now, if that felt like a lot and a little overwhelming, we're gonna go back through the easier way that we can identify that D is correct. Now we know the slopes have to be the same and the intercepts must be different, so you're always perfectly fine to simply put this in Y equals MX plus B form. So the original expression would be Y equals negative X plus one, and this one down here would give us Y equals negative X plus three halves. So that meets our requirement of same slope, different y-intercept. B is gonna be the exact same equation. That would give you infinite solutions. All right, next up is completing the square with circles. Now, I'm gonna pop up for my math book the steps that we can follow. This is really just a memorization question. Anybody can get these right. You just have to memorize these steps. So first thing is we're gonna group our x and y terms. So we'll get x squared plus 6x. We're gonna leave that space to complete the square y squared plus 5y, leave that space to complete the square, and then we're gonna have our number over here. Now we complete the square, as you can see, by dividing that middle term by two and squaring it. So six over two equals three, three squared equals nine. So we have to add nine over here as well. Five over two, five divided by two is five over two, and that square is gonna give us 25 over four. So we're gonna add that over here. 
Well, now we know this portion over here is equal to our r squared, our radius squared. So we have to combine all of these terms so we can solve for that. So we're going to now have negative 45 over 4 plus 36 over 4. That's a pretty bad 3. Plus 25 over 4. That's going to end up equaling 16 over 4, which is simply the same as 4. Now we have to take the square root of that, and that's going to give us our correct answer of 2. Just make sure you have those steps memorized down from my math book that I showed you there. If you get one of these, this is supposed to be the hardest question in the no-calc section. It's something you easily can get right. All right, now last up has been the killer question on the December 2022 test. It was on October 2022, so it's definitely something you should be prepped for. This is your advanced exponent questions. And all of these questions revolve around two important exponent rules, bases and fractional exponents. So here we see two numbers a and b are each greater than zero. This question is from the April 2021 SAT. And the square root of a is equal to the cube root of b. So I can write that as a to the one half, that's the same as the square root of a, is equal to b to the one third. For what value of x is a to the two x minus one equal to b? Well, we know this is equal to b. So if we wanna solve for this, right, we know a to the two x minus one equals b. Well, we wanna be able to set both a expressions equal to each other. So we wanna to work to get our original expression also in terms of b, which we can do by cubing everything. If we cube everything, this is gonna be re-expressed as a to the three halves equals b. Well, now we can set our a to the three halves and our a to the two x minus one equal to each other. This is gonna give us a to the two x minus one equals a to the three halves. From there, we're simply gonna to have to cancel out our bases, and now we get 2x minus 1 equals 3 halves. That's going to end up giving us that x equals 5 over 4. Now, if you really enjoyed these last three questions that are very advanced, you're looking for more practice with stuff like this, I recommend checking out my advanced math course, which I will link below. If you're looking for more free math help on YouTube, go ahead and check out this video. This is going to cover a ton more math concepts that are really going to help increase your score. If this video helped you out, please like and subscribe. Comment any questions you guys have heading into the test.